This is going to be video number six in the series for uh, constructing our Drive app. It is also the beginning of stage three. So this video is labeled as video number six, stage three, part one. And as usual, we have uh, the written instructions. Let's start following them. We start from where we left off on drive stage three. That was the end of video number five. Duplicate the scene drive stage two, call it drive stage three. I will do that. Drive stage two, duplicate. And now it's called drive stage three. And of course, I won't forget to double click to open it because otherwise I'll be introducing changes to drive stage two double click now i know i'm working on stage three um you're going to download the teachers pack for stage three unzip and copy paste into assets i have that already and i'm going to find it here is the teachers pack for stage three unzip, copy, and the uh, one I'm working on for right now, I labeled it lab three for video and assets. And it should already have uh, a bunch of things, you know, from, um, you know, the stage one. Stage two didn't have extra assets. This is why there's one and three. Uh, and by the time I go back to Unity, it will import those assets which, you know, includes some sounds, you know, and things like that. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it has some extra meshes. It has some uh, extra textures, and it has some sounds. Back to this. Also, as usual, we're always going to check. Um, every time we open, we go to Project Settings, Meta XR, see if there's any recommendations, accept them, and or, and or fix them. Uh, edit, Project Settings, Meta XR. I owe it, oh, this recommendation always comes up. I fix it. Save and save project. Now we're really ready to start with actual steps. Um, import, this is something from the Drive Stage 1 teachers pack. From the standard assets package, 2023 20, fixed Unity package, which should be in the Drive Stage 1 teachers pack. I'm going to import it. And there's two ways to import a package. Either to right-click import package custom package or simply double-click on it. In both cases, a dialog appears. I'm going to ask to import all. And it's because we're going to use a few things from it. So where do I find it? I find it not in the pack that I just imported, but in drive stage one, standard assets. And you know it's a package because it has this icon. I'll double-click on it. A dialog appears. As usual, we, when we import something, we look for all new, so it doesn't, you know, replace or you know, uh, uh, con conflict with anything we already have. Just in case, I'll press all and import, and let's see how long that takes. It shouldn't take long at all. Meanwhile, while it's importing, well, when I say it shouldn't take long at all, it really depends on the computer. This computer is a pretty nice one, so it doesn't take long at all. Um, once this imports, um, what I'd like to do in order to kind of uh, uh, keep everything chronological is create a folder that I'm going to call stage three assets where we're going to put all the things we're going to create, especially for stage three materials and prefabs and things like that. Let's see if it's done importing. Yep, it is. Um, console clear. If you can clear it, it's not a real error. So under assets, new folder, stage three assets. And in that folder, I'm going to create a material. That's the next step. Um, in it, create a material called ocean floor mat. Uh, the albedo is going to be uh, the one called rocks base color and the normal rocks normal. So let's start with that. Material. Ocean floor mat. 
uh, sooner or later, I'm going to assign it to the plane anyway. So I'm going to assign it to the plane. Uh, right now, of course, it has, you know, like nothing in it. The albedo starting with R. Notice that now I have a lot more textures because we imported those standard assets. So under R for rocks, here it is. Rocks base color is going to be the albedo. And the normal is going to be rocks normal. Here is rocks normal. Now, as you can see, because our uh, plane is huge, we need to change the tiling. The tiling, I always go by mistake to the secondary map, map tiling. It needs to be the regular tiling. 100 by 100 because the plane itself is scaled to be 100 by 100. So the material will scale, scale with it. Um, let's see. Yep. So this is going to be the ocean floor. If you think that it needs to be scaled, you know, more or less, it's a matter of taste la later on. Um, in any case, um, tiling 100 by 100, zero metallic, zero smoothness, because, you know, the ocean floor does, doesn't have metallic or smoothness assigned to the plane you have. And then we're going to change the name of the plane to ocean floor. So instead of being called plane, it's be going to be called ocean floor it's the material itself zero metallic which already has and zero smoothness gotta tell you looking at it right now i might want to increase the tiling to like 500 by 500 just to make those pebbles a little closer you know what i'm just gonna leave it 100 by 100 this could all be always be changed later um the next thing we're going to do um, is to change the Y player position to 101, which will place it 101 meters in the air above the ocean floor. The ocean floor is at zero, or at least it should be. The ocean floor, as far as its transform, is zero, zero, zero. But the player, which if you remember, includes the vehicle and the camera, the player is not going to be way up in the air, 101 meters above it so if i zoom out and look at the player he, see it's like hovering way above the ocean floor what we're going to do is start building our track pretty much where the car is uh for those of us not too familiar with the metric system 101 meters are about 300 feet next we're going to create an empty game object, which we're going to call whole track. As you are probably guessing, it's going to be a container for all the track parts. We're going to reset transform, very important. Empty game object. See how it wants to come up with all kinds of really weird numbers. We're going to reset. And that is going to be called whole track. In whole track, as a child, we're going to create a cube because basically those track parts, a lot of them are just like uh, cubes. Uh, we're going to call it track part. We're going to give it the following parameters. I might as well even call it track part one, but I'm going to turn it into a, a prefab later. So um, track part generic will be just fine. So first of all, a cube inside whole track 3D object cube and its name is going to be track part and the parameters i'm going to give it let's see if i can make this more convenient for myself are going to be like this zero 100 zero remember the player is 101 so it's like one meter under the player so zero y 100 uh, z zero uh, there's no rotation whatsoever but as far as scaling it's going to be five meters wide on the x it's going to be rather short 0 0.4 on the y and 20 meters long or deep which means at this point it should look like a plank or a board under the car something like this and also you should see it like this then it says to create a uh, material for it let's bring this back to the center 
Um, just make sure I got the right numbers. In stage three assets, we're going to create a material for it called track mat one. As an albedo, we're going to use track concrete texture and a normal called concrete texture normal. So a new material called track mat one. Give it, oh, let's spell it correctly. Give it to that track part. The material itself is going to use uh, as an as its albedo something called uh, texture or track. What is it called? Um, track concrete texture. If I just search for track. It should find it here it is it already gave it the texture as normal it actually starts with the word concrete here's concrete texture normal uh the tiling is going to be three by is it six by three or three by six uh three by six because we kind of stretched the whole thing you see how the uh, texture looks you know stretched so this will basically unstretch it we'll rescale it yeah, that looks a lot more like it. And metallic zero and smoothness zero. Uh, zero metallic zero smoothness. Assign it to track part, which we already did. And we're going to assign that physics material we call road, because that's the real road to the box collider. So this track part, because it started as a cube, has a box collider. And in the box collider, instead of physics material, none. It's going to be the one called rolled. Notice, by the way, that we have a bunch more now. These came with the standard uh, assets. Road. Um, play. You should be able to drive off the cliff and land on the ocean floor. In some cases, because the floor is only a plane, we're going to fix that later. It might go through it. In most cases, it won't. But in some cases, it'll just tear right through it. But the, but the most important thing is that I can play. It'll kind of, this is at 101 meters. So it'll fall one meter down, kind of, um, then I should be able to drive off, you know, the board, off the cliff turn it around in a way that I can see. I'll see it both on the game window and in the uh, scene window. I will play. It falls down. Uh, sometimes in order to start driving, you have to click. Even though it's play focus, sometimes you have to bring it into focus by one click, one click on the game window. And then I'm driving and whoa, falling off the cliff and bouncing on the ocean floor and staying there because we haven't scripted anything for it to do. Um, good. If that works, let me add something uh, very important. Every time you play, I do it almost uh, instinctively now. Don't forget to stop and don't confuse pause with stop. Pause, pause is not stop. You play and on the same button, you pause, uh, you stop. Or you can use uh, Command P on a Mac or Control P on uh, Windows. But in any case, make sure that before you continue to edit, that you stop because you might remember that uh, anything you edit while you play, as soon as you stop playing, is forgotten. If all that works, we're going to turn track part into a prefab by dragging it into that folder we just created called Stage three assets. Feel free alternatively to create a my prefabs folder. The whole point is to keep things organized. So I, to me, I like to organize things chronologically. So if all the things that I created for stage three are here, track part, if all its uh, parameters are correct, is going to be dragged and become a prefab and blue and all that stuff. Um, once it's a prefab, I think you're guessing that just like uh, Lego pieces, we're going to drag another instance to the hierarchy uh, as another child of whole track. It'll automatically start its numbering, track one. But because it's the second one, what I'd like to do is this. This is just my suggestion. Naming in this case is just for um, 
convenience. Instead of track part, this instance of track part, I'm going to call track part one because it's my first one. And as I drag another one to be a track of whole child, this is going to be track part two. And let's see, of course, right now they're both, you know, like occupying the same space, but the changes that are going to be made are in the scene window, make sure you're using the Y view and orthographic, which is that little square in the middle. So I'm going to, in the scene window, click on Y, which means I'm looking at it from above. And also orthographic is that little square. That little square kind of flattens everything to look like what I like to call architect's view or a blueprint view, where basically there is no um, perspective. Let me just show this. Uh, if I looked at it from the side, in regular uh, perspective view, whatever's further away gets narrower. But in orthographic view, it's still parallel. So when you're looking at things from above and orthographic, it's really easy to place things on like a floor, which is exactly what we're about to do. The next thing to do is to make sure that we got a grid. Uh, Press the snap increment tool in the scene window and it pops up a little dialogue. And in that dialogue, we're going to say that our increment snapping is going to be in increments of five meters on all three um, axes. So right here, this button, this is the snapping. Right now, it's like a quarter of a meter. We're going to change it to five meters because it's locked. It's going to change it to all of them. And this means... That from now on, using the control or command on Mac OS, control on Windows, command on Mac OS, while moving track part one, which I called, you know, two, because the first one didn't have a name, to the next track part, it should snap. See tutorial video. What I want to do is snap it to the next Z. Instead of Z0, I want it to be uh, Z20. I want it to be 20 meters ahead. It's something like this. I'm going to take track part two or whatever's the second one i'm going to hold command and drag this see how it snaps in increments of 5 10 15 and now 20. you can also type the 20 but now i got two track parts that are perfectly aligned they don't have any gap between them if i just dragged it kind of sort of to where i wanted to it wouldn't be exactly where it needs to be this one needs to be exactly at you know, 20 meters ahead of the other one. This means that when I play, now I got a track that's twice as long to drive on and fall off of when it's over. By the way, sometimes you will notice that there's a little bump at the stitch between them. I like that. It adds interest to the game because it's just like those little bumps on, you know, bridges with the, that are built out of, you know, uh, concrete slabs and so on. Um, we are... At step 16, where we're going to add a different kind of part. So now I'm going to stop the tutorial and I'll see you in part seven.